Estimados señores y señoras, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, thank you for uh, the honor of inviting me to be with you here today. No, I don't really speak much Spanish, I'm afraid. For this reason, I change now better to English. I'm very sorry not to bother you with an extremely funny pronouncing your wonderful language. So thanks again for invi in inviting me to this conference. So I had the chance for the first time to come to Tener Teneriffa, which is really a wonderful island. And I was very happy to see in the beginning the video with the change that you did in the last years in waste management. It would have been really a pity if this island would just be destroyed by waste. But I can tell you, for example, knowing Malta very well, they are facing, they have faced exactly the same problems, exactly the same problems as you, starting with illegal landfills, moving to a landfill, which you can see nearly all over the island, and now trying to move away from this. So um, I think it's quite good to see that, that most of the parts of the European Union are really moving into the right dire direction. Just a very few words about EXPRA, Extended Producer Responsibility Alliance. We are a, an alliance of uh, packaging recovery organizations uh, from 21 European countries, but also from Israel and from Quebec and Canada. Uh, my members support that more than 200 million people are offered separate collection and of course we hope that we are able to increase year by year the number of tonnages at the moment more than 60 million tons of packaging recycled year by year and of course our major partners are local authorities and obliged industry who is paying the whole game I'm very happy that I have two Spanish members, Eco Embes and Eco Video, who are here today as well. And so I had quite often the chance to come to Spain and to see what, what, what is happening, to learn the good things, and of course, which is sometimes more important, to learn about the challenges and the things that are not yet working as we would like to see them work. Um, my association, we are two people in Brussels, we have a, a mission and it's not only lobbying, not the typical lobby association, you know, the people with the luggage full of money going to the MEPs and trying to convince them. Um, we try to do more because we are trying to work with our members, with our 25 members, trying to help them to improve their services. As I said, trying to uh, understand where are the challenges, where are the weaknesses, what are best practices in other countries and how we can help them to move step by step for, forward to the circular economy, to recycle more, to help in industry to, to, in to increase the efficiency of their packaging, so to make them more eco-friendly, etc. Uh, the situation today, and I can tell you that at the moment this topic is extremely hot discussed in Brussels since the Commission put the circular economy package on the table uh, December last year and since last week uh, Mrs. Bonafé has published her report from the European pa pa Parliament. We are discussing this topic very strongly from, from all sides with all the stakeholders how to move forward, how should the targets look like in the next years, like uh, proposed from the Commission 65% 2030 target for municipal waste. Mrs. Bonafé said this is not ambitious enough, we have to go to 70% or 75%. Uh, whereas if you see the reality in many countries, we are still far away from this uh, goal, 70% recycling of municipal waste. And we cannot fully trust this data. Or it can be, as uh, Jean-Pierre explained, it can be calculated in many different ways. So one of the major concerns of EXPRA and of our members is that uh, we are about to start for a marathon, but no one knows where the zero point is at the moment. So I think this will be one of the, the, the major tasks of the European Commission, the member states, but also of all the stakeholders, to understand where we are really today. And the same counts for, for packaging. Hmm? We, 
The Commission has pro proposed new ta ta targets. Of course, the Parliament has added a few percentages as well. So there will be now a bargaining, like on a tur Turkish market, I'm afraid, between the Council, the Parliament, and the mem member states, which targets are the right one uh, for the next 20 years. But again, for us, the problem is, as we do not know where we are, it is quite difficult to say what should be the right targets for the few future. So in an ideal world, we would first do our homework and uh, ensure good calculation methods, harmonized calculation methods, reli reliable da data, and then propose new ta targets. But of course, we are in a political environment, so we have to do this probably in parallel. And again, this is the current situation all over Europe. If we believe this data, it looks not too bad. Most of the member states are fulfilling the minimum target, 55% for the overall packaging, re re recycling. Only some countries like especially Poland or Malta, Romania, Hungary, that are really lacking behind, but mainly for very specific local reasons, which are usually quite obvious, but still difficult to manage in this environment in these countries. Uh, but what you can, can get out of best practices, uh, I think, from, from these figures, is that all the top performers have implemented the packaging directive via extended producer responsibility. There's only Hungary, Denmark, number 14, and uh, Croatia, which has not delivered package, uh, data for 2013. They have implemented the packaging directive via a special taxation system. So without the uh, involving, without involving in industry, without involving the know-how and knowledge that the obliged industry and their PROs can deliver in this field. All top performers have established a very convenient infrastructure for separate collection of household packaging. Like Spain, I think, you have improved over the last 10 years. If I remember the first time I was going to Mallorca 20 years ago, and if I compare it with nowadays, how the separate collection is looking like, it is a, a difference like day and na night. But then if you turn back to countries like Romania, to Poland, the big pro problem is they have no separate collection. Still, only in a very few cities, uh, again, for very different reasons. One of the reasons is that they have not opted for a single service system, like in Spain, like in France, like in Italy, but they have started with a competitive approach from the very beginning. So, of course, no one has the, the braveness to invest a lot of money in separate collection for our inhabitants. Many or most of the top performers, Germany, Flanders, and so on, they have introduced additional economic instruments. They have either a landfill ban, they have introduced landfill taxes. Very often they are introducing step-by-step -step pay as you throw, so that really the inhabitants get an incentive to produce less waste and to separate their waste to the best extent. There are a lot of difficulties, challenges, if you use pay, pay, pay as you throw, so you have to, to introduce it very careful, but on the long run, it seems from the experience uh, the best way to move forward. Also, most of the top performers put a lot of emphasis on the quality of the collected materials and work a lot to reduce the impurities, and we heard it in the Pre previous session, it's all about awareness, it's all about education, both to convince our inhabitants to separate the packaging and the other waste in the right way, but also to work with our obliged industry to design the packaging in just such a way that they take the end of life into account. A account. So, as uh, Roche explained to you as well, we have a working group also in Expra to work on the European le level with obliged industry to explain them what will happen if, so that they understand when choosing a packaging that the end of life is one of their criteria that they choose or, or not. Hmm? 
we cannot force them, but I think we have to explain and to show them, demonstrate them what happens if they use this material, that material, etc. And I think this is uh, improving and uh, helping industry a lot. And finally, clear rules who is responsible for what within the EPR scheme. This is a problem that you can find in many countries that these roles and responsibilities are not really defined. What is the job, job of the local authorities? What is the job of in industry? What is the job of the waste management industry? And at end. You have to clearly define it and then the difficult EPR system can work. Just going here, the difficult EPR system, because in the standard model, let's say this way, you have the, the EPR system, the packaging recovery organization in the middle, in the middle of the mess, as some people say, because we have to try to keep this wheel turning. We have to keep this wheel turning, especially in bad times. Bad times meaning you collect material, you sort material, and still you are not really able to, to sell it sometimes because of the low prices for oil. If the prices for oil are higher, this helps recycling a lot as well because you can sell the collected and sorted material for a very good pr price. So, and of course, the job of a PRO is to have a good contact, contact and contracts with all the involved pe people to have the the um, contracts and the good relation to local authorities if the local authorities are responsible for the collection, partly for the sorting of the packaging. So you have to finance their job in an agreed way. You have to deal with the recyclers, you have to deal, but also you have to deal with the obliged industry because all these are costs, so you have to collect the money from obliged industry to, fi to finance the operational wor work. And, of course, the consumer, the consumer, the consumer, our inhabitants. Without de them, nothing is working. So you have to make the system easy, you have to make the system convenient, and you have to work with them. As we heard today uh, as well, we have to start with, with the kindergarten, we have to start with the school, schools, because they can force us to behave in the right, the, the, the right way. And I, I could tell you that in Germany we saw what is happening if you stop such activities. Uh, ten years ago in Germany the system was, was changed from non-profit to profit, and of course the first thing that the profit system stopped is education and campaign, uh, awareness campaigns, because this was not obliged in the law. So step by step you can see now that the quality of the material, the quality that the people are collecting is going down, down, down. So for me this is a major proof that education and awareness is key for the success of every EPR system. And if you now look to the countries with a very low performance, you can all also see that such constant and structured campaigns are missing. So this is, I think, a very key part of the work that the PROs, obliged industry, together with the government authorities are doing and are necessary to make such an EPR system sufficient. But, as you can see, uh, we are in Europe, it is incredible, even the countries who are introduced EPR, there, is not, there are not two systems which are the same. So every country decided to do it a little bit different. It is really amazing and I think of the, on the other side, it keeps me busy, it keeps me paid, so it's a good job for consultants to explain all the all obliged industry, all the authorities, how the EPR systems are different from each other, not to talk about the other approaches like Texas or the hybrid system in Iceland. But I think it is really necessary to harmonize the systems in a better way, because it will, will be much easier, especially for small and medium-sized companies, to make business all, all over Europe. If they are faced in every country with a totally legal, different environment, uh, they will not have the, the resources to, to, to make business and will stop business just because of such a small compliance matter. Um, just for those who are not totally familiar with EPR, we think that extended producer responsibility is the bridge between production and waste management. Because if you speak with the obliged industry, with the fillers, with the retailers, if you speak with the recyclers, 
you will really see that they speak different languages. Although they speak both Spanish or both English, they are using different terms. They have a totally different view on the business. So I think it is one of our skills, or should be one of our skills, to bring the two sides together to explain them the consequences on both sides so that in, in total the pa packaging, but this counts in the same way for we, for batteries, for cars, so that the two sides are brought together so we can uh, increase the quality of, of recycling a lot. A, a lot. Extended producer responsibility is mainly an individual obligation. So we always think immediately of some systems, of course, but in the first step, it's an individual obligation on a company. Uh, they are usually able to pass this obligation to a collective entity like a PRO, like Ecoembus, like Ecovideo in Spain, but in principle, they are also able to fulfill the obligations individually, which works probably better for cars, as there are not so many pro producers and not so many products, but for packaging with billions and billions of items every year at millions of uh, waste places where they arrive, so in the households, uh, a collective entity is usually the much more efficient way to fulfill the, um, the obligations. But, as I said before, it is no, no standalone solution. So, just introduce EPR and this will solve all our problems. I'm sorry, this is not the case. So, it is one part of a comprehensive legislative appro approach next to many others, as I explained, landfill ban, landfill taxes, perhaps pay as a throw, putting a lot of emphasis on the horeca sector as well, and enforcement. I think it's la like with our uh, motorways and our streets, uh, you, you can put hundreds of symbols on, on the streets that you are not allowed to drive more than 100. If there is no one to enforce it, the people will not do, do it. And it's somehow the same if you have an EPR legislation. You need the government to ensure that the performance of the companies and of the PROs is monitored and in case something is going wrong is enforced. And you cannot believe in how many countries this is not taking place. Even in Germany this is one of the major problems that we have, that we have too many free riders and the government for different reasons is just not ta taking care. Just a few words to close to, with our demands or our, our view on the cir circular economy package. We think extended producer responsibility is a, a principle. It's not just something you can outsource. And it has a lot of, lot of to do with our people and the money we are collecting from industry in, on the interest of our people. So it's for us a general interest service that has to be done on a non-profit matter. So we welcome a lot that the European Commission is proposing general requir requirements for EPR. This will help a lot some member states to move for forward in their design of the uh, legislation. On the technical side, we still have some pro problems how the final recycling process, how the recycling is measured, because uh, we all seem to understand, Commission, Parliament, stakeholders, that it should be measured at the entrance of the recycling pl plant, but the proposal is not really clear on this. And for, for, for us, some quality st standards are missing. Because we all know if you give shit in, you get shit out. And we really would like to avoid this. We would like to give good quality into the recycling process, and then you can be sure that you get good quality out. And as I said in the beginning, data. Data reporting, comparability, reliability. This is extremely important and could be improved in the proposal. And Mrs. Bonafé from the European Parliament, she made a lot of proposals how to improve the the uh, data entry reporting in the Commission proposal. That was my short trip. I hope I stayed in the 20 minutes. And of course, I'm more than happy to take your questions. Thanks a lot. Um, we have a question from the floor for Mr. Quoden. There's somebody here that would like to know 
why we have so many problems in finding information on packaging that's recycling and we'd like to know the, the you have the number total number of um, containers that are recycled but we don't know exactly how many there are in total difficult question uh, first easy answer in principle every packaging is recyclable it just depends on the money the money in reality, the problem is usually that uh, you recycle those packaging uh, of which you can collect, collect a minimum amount. So you, you, need, you need a certain size of the stream to make it somehow efficient to find then the recy recycler and then to find uh, an application for it. So this is the, the reason why uh, we are, for example, in plastics, uh, concentrating at the moment more on the bottles, on the rigid plastics, etc. Because there we have recyclers, there we have uh, an application. And we still have to work much more. And I have seen in France, uh, in Spain, for example, uh, great efforts and great success to, to recycle foils as well. So this, this is, I would say, the challenge for the future, which has already taken place in some member states, but we can improve prove it, this more d d difficult to recycle uh, packaging, where we have to find the applications, where we have to, to collect a stream which is big, big enough that makes the recycling viable. But as you have seen, the proposals, 55% of re recycling from the Commission or even 60% recycling Bonafé report in 2025. Uh, the only way forward is to find solutions for all kinds of packaging. And as I see what industry is doing at the moment as research, I'm very optimistic that we will, within the next two or three years, have applications and recycling measures for all these packaging. Tenemos otra pregunta. I hear no translation. Um, now it works. Um, the, the main obstacles for member states, I would say it is very often the, the, the braveness, the political situation, because very quickly these questions become a political game. So you move away from an objective, technical approach to discuss what is the best way, you jump into a political discussion. Because as, as we know, there are some religious fights 
in the waste management se sector. So this becomes very often the, the game. And of course, if you try to, to enforce or try to change the legislation to, to put more pressure on enforcement, there are a lot of interested uh, stakeholders which do not like this enforcement because it would end their, their business. So a member state, the government has to be brave to, to put the right legislation in place. This is for me the biggest ob obstacle. And that's why we think the European Union can, he can help a lot by making a lot of these guidelines uh, or mi minimum requirements ma mandatory so you have a good framework still with a lot of flexibility, so not to harm any business model, but a, a good framework that will help the, the member states to improve their waste management. But of course the best would be if we stop the religious fight and go back to to a neutral discussion which is based on facts and best practices to move forward.